Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how the derivatives and integrals of hyperbolic functions work. Honestly, I'm just going to focus on the derivatives because I'm playing with the derivatives and the integrals are kind of the same thing going backwards. So I'm assuming that you know kind of the basics of hyperbolic functions. If you don't, I do have a video on that so you can check that out. So let's get started. So if I want to find the derivative of, let's start with just cinch x. So what you're going to want to do here is you actually just want to think about what the, the definition of cinch x is. So it's really this, and this is what I want to take the derivative of. Now, just to be nice and explicit, don't let this, this 2 throw you off. It's not like we have to use the quotient rule here. So I could just kind of break this up like this for now if I wanted to, so that I could just think of that 2 as a constant, and now I could take the derivative really of this whole thing here. It's equivalent. So in doing that, this will be 1 half. So this is just e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And then the derivative of e to the negative x will be e to the negative x times negative 1. So don't forget that you have to use the chain rule here. And so now you can see that you could actually rewrite this whole thing um, still over 2. So let me do that. So this will be e to the x now plus e to the negative x and then all of this over 2. And so what is that? So that is just our, uh, I almost wrote, <laughs> instead of writing the hyperbolic cosine. So, so it's just cosh of x, cosh x. So that would be the derivative. Okay, so in some ways that might seem kind of intuitive because you might think to yourself, oh, well the derivative of sine is cosine, so shouldn't it be the same for hyperbolic functions? So this is where this can get a little bit tricky and, and um, I always kind of warn people when you're working with hyperbolic functions, they're kind of like trig functions, but not totally. So just to illustrate that, so let's find the derivative here. So the definition of cosh x looks like this. So this is really what I have to find the derivative of. So if I take, so let's see, I'll just break it up one more time just to make it easier for us to look at. So here's what I really want to take the derivative of, and that x does not look like an x. Okay. so. The derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. The derivative of e to the negative x is e to the negative x times negative 1. So then the way that I could write all of this out, this will be e to the x minus e to the negative x, and then I'm just putting all of that over 2. So look at what this actually looks like. This looks like just cinch of x, right? So this is where this actually gets a little bit more confusing. With hyperbolic functions, it's not perfect, right? So the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but when we're talking now hyperbolic functions, so hyperbolic cosine, the derivative is hyperbolic sine, not negative hyperbolic sine. So keep that in mind, and I highly recommend that you kind of take the time to go through and find all these derivatives. But I'm gonna do just a couple more with you too, just to kind of um, work, work through all this. Okay. So let's move on to hyperbolic cosecant. So let's just find the derivative here. So for this, I can actually kind of shorten this in some ways. So this is equal to 1 over cinch x. And so I can really take the derivative of this. And I could rewrite this so that it's cinch x to the negative first. And so this is what I want to take the derivative of, OK? So I could use the chain rule here. So this would be negative 1 times, so first I take the derivative of the outside function. So I'm going to just subtract 1 from that. Then I multiply this by the derivative of cinch x, which I know is cosh x. And so now I just have to kind of work with this and, and sort all of this out. So this turns into negative cosh x over cinch x squared. So this I can break up then into two pieces. So this will be, how about negative 1 over cinch x. So we'll take that part, and then we've also got the cosh x over cinch x. And now looking at it this way, so this part here, this is the hyperbolic cosecant, and then this is the hyperbolic tangent. 
So this equals negative hyperbolic cosecant, hyperbolic cotangent. So there you go. So there's your derivative in this case. So that might feel slightly familiar. Um, so that one does work a little bit more in line with what we think. But like I said, you've always got to kind of just analyze it each time to, to figure out what the right derivative is. And so part of this is now learning a new set of rules. OK, so I just want to do one more. So um, I want to also talk about hyperbolic tangent. So I would recommend that maybe you pause the video here and see if you can find the derivative on your own. And you should be able to do this using this definition of the hyperbolic tangent function. So there's a hint. So go ahead and try to find um, this derivative and then hit play when you're ready to see the solution. Okay, so in this case, you're gonna have to use the quotient rule. So first I will take the derivative of the top function. So the derivative of cinch is cosh. And then you multiply that by the bottom function, which is just cosh. Then I subtract off and I take the derivative of the bottom function. So the derivative of cosh is cinch. So we just talked about that. And then, and then just multiply that by the top function. So I've got this. And then all of this over cosh squared. So then I get cosh squared x minus cinch squared x over cosh squared x. And now this is where you have to know some, some things about hyperbolic functions. So there's actually an identity for this, and I talked about this in one of my videos, that this actually equals one. So all of this equals one over cosh squared x. And so that's just hyperbolic secant x. So that would be the derivative in this case. So very similar to then how trig functions work. So sometimes, it, sometimes it, they look closer to trig functions and sometimes they don't. Okay, so I think we kind of get the idea here now. So I have just a list of all the derivatives of hyperbolic functions. So just note, I've, I've tried to note on here, so like for instance, the derivative of cosh is not negative, or the derivative of hyperbolic secant is negative. So just kind of notice some of these uh, things that can happen. And you can prove this to yourself if you actually try to repeat some of the steps that we did. So I, the only ones I didn't do here were cotangent and um, what was the other one? Uh, I guess secant. So you can give those a try on your own if you'd like. And so pause the video if you want to write any of these down. Probably good to have the list in front of you. And then here's the list of hyperbolic uh, functions, just some of the integral formulas. So probably not surprising how some of the formulas work out if you know the derivatives. So feel free to write down any of those if you need them. And so that'll cover it for this particular video. So that was just an overview of kind of how these derivatives are different from trig derivatives. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.